Discover Help presents Stress-Free Living with Ray Samich and Mr. Stress-Free, Ratanjit S. Sandhi. This audio program is an unscripted and unrehearsed conversation between Ray and Ratanjit. It is shared with you in hope of adding value to your life. We encourage you to listen to this program in its entirety to receive the full impact of its message. Sit back, relax, open your heart, mind, and soul to this edition of Stress-Free Living. Welcome you to Stress-Free Living. Thank you so much for being with us here today. I'm Ray Samich, and I'd like to introduce you to my dear friend and longtime radio co-host, Ratanjit Sandi. Ratanjit, how are you this fine day? A wonderful, Ray. How are you? I'm excellent today, looking outside through my window at uh, beautiful blue skies and green trees. Uh, summer in Northeast Ohio is something very special and uh, nice that we have people joining us from all around the world. And some of you maybe even are experiencing winter this time of the year, but uh, we are in, in uh, originating here from Cleveland, Ohio, where the weather is perfect for this summer day. And Ratanjit, uh, we have an unusual topic here today that maybe for the first time in all of our decades of the program, we invented a word <laughs> that we want to uh, explain to everybody how that came about. We uh, call today's show Unhabiting Our Habits. And the reason we call it that is that last week we did a show called Unlearning Our Learning. And it was an interesting conversation that we had. And I think over the last, uh, over that period of the hour that we talked about it, we realized that much of our learning that we do in life becomes habits. So maybe the conversation shouldn't really be so much about unlearning what we've learned, but it really is unhabiting what our habits have become. And thus the show today. So I'm kind of interested in this. I, I took the time to do a little research this week on what habits are, how they're formed. And you've always said to me 21 days, 30 days, something like that. How did you come to, to believe that it takes 21 to 30 days to do something to develop a habit? Is that just by personal observation? This is what uh, the experts tell us. See, you know, how, how a habit is created once we understand how a habit is created. The habit formation uh, is a process in which a behavior through regular repetition becomes automatically habitual. Habit may be initially be triggered by a goal or over, over our time or, or, or your fear or your greed or your um, desire to be better. There are all kinds of incentives which triggers this habit formation. Once a habit formation, once anything is repeated regularly, many times it becomes a, automatically a habit. And they have discovered there is obviously each person depends on how many times they repeat a particular behavior. So they say anytime if you repeat something 29 times, it becomes a habit. Some, of, some people say it is 40 times it becomes a habit. So anything you do regularly at the same time, repeatedly, it becomes a habit. Now, interestingly, it is all because our brain is designed to make us more efficient. And there is a particular part of the brain I mentioned uh, earlier is called basal ganglia. And this actually uh, converts every uh, behavior, behavior which we repeat into a habit. And once a behavior becomes a habit, it's very important. Once a behavior becomes a habit, the decision-making part of the brain, which is, which is basically your prefrontal cortex, prefrontal cortex is the decision-making part of the brain, relies on the habit and stop 
incorporating the process of new data. So your portion of the brain, which creates original thoughts, new ideas, new things, does not interfere with your habits. So you end up whatever habit you have formed, without your notice, you will do that. And suddenly you are being recognized by the habit you keep. And it is not the knowledge which transform you, it is always the habit which transform you. Ray? So you've given you know, a thought process to go down here momentarily. But before we do that, I, I want to talk and let us be aware. When I one of the articles I wrote said that we really, and I agree with it, we really don't think about our habits except for our bad yeah. habits. We don't realize how many things that we do habitually in our life. And if you take the time to realize how much we live by our habits, it's it's a little bit mind blowing, really, because pretty much from the moment that we wake up in the morning, our habits are engaged and everything we do, the process of of, you know, how quickly we get out of bed. What's the first thing we do? The second thing we do and each one of those actions whether it's you know brushing your teeth or getting dressed or taking a shower, I mean, all of those things are are just habits that our body automatically does, and we don't we don't even think about the transition. the The series of things that we do every morning is in itself a habit. You do this and you do this and you do this and you do this, and we don't think about that at all until something goes awry. You know, we we've we've said something that wasn't right, or we did something that hurt somebody or that caused us pain. And then we said, oh, you know, that's a bad habit, I have to stop. But my point is that if, if there's so many habits in our life that lead us, that guide us, and based on what you just said, we, we don't introduce new concepts. We don't the habit takes over, it blocks the prefrontal cortex from thinking about new things. Are we designed, do you think, to change our habits? Or are we designed to only find good ones and then keep them? Do you think it's, it's can we really unhabit our habits? Is that even possible? Or were we designed to find a good habit and keep it for the rest of our life? Well, <clears throat> Ultimately, until we change our core beliefs, our core truth, our core basic character, we cannot change our habits. So ultimately, our, our habits end up becoming our character. Many times when you find a person who be behaves in certain ways, who talks in certain ways, who reacts in certain ways, whose liking and disliking are certain foods. So that is how you recognize that person. If that person changes some of those things, you, you tell them, hey, you have changed. Basically, right. basically he has not or she has not changed. It's the habit. So a person is what their habits are. A person is not what their knowledge is. Now, our last time we gave an example of a medical professional, you know, their lifespan is 10 years less than a normal person. Although a, a doctor is trained how to uh, understand health, how to keep yourself healthy, but they live by their habits, not by their knowledge. They make a living by their knowledge. They, they correct every uh, one uh, other than themselves, their habits to live a better habits. They say, okay, you have to lose weight. You have to quit smoking. You have to eat these, these, these foods so that you can have health. Although they end up 
having the knowledge give them false uh, security. Uh, I know this. So knowledge gives you false security, but you are played by your habits. Okay. That is true. Plus what you said earlier, that we're less open to new ideas. We're less open to, to new information because of the way our brain functions. Our, our, and it, it's brilliant. I mean, the way we were created is that those habits do run our lives. I mean, that is a, that's a phenomenal feature that we have built into our computers that are our bodies. And the way the habits were designed is they don't want anyone cluttering those up. We don't, we don't want to mess up those habits. As those habits are done properly, they can't be questioned constantly and, and entertain new data that can throw us out of that habit. So that's kind of what I'm getting to is that by design, the, the habits are supposed to be there. They're supposed to be steady and consistent and lead us. And so it it's really difficult to change those. And you validated that by saying that unless we have a total new understanding of, of what is truth and what our purpose is and, and why we're here, anything that we all can try to do over our lifetimes to improve our habits doesn't have a lot of chance of, of really holding, does it? I mean, it's we're gonna fall back into those habits because by the nature of the definition of habit, they are they're going to be really tough to break uh, there is a, a 2190 rule so this rule states that it takes 21 days uh, to make a habit although it takes more than that and uh, 90 days to make a lifestyle so until a habit is converted into a lifestyle which is takes longer uh, you can change that habit easily. Once it becomes a lifestyle, it becomes very dif difficult to change that. Yeah. That habit now has uh, total support of your personality, your lifestyle, your your every everything you do. And as a result of that, those habits we live with, and uh, they are difficult to break. Go ahead. And, you know, we don't want, we always talk about change. Everybody says change is the hardest thing. Changing a habit after 90 days, and in some cases after 20 years, you know, you, you've done things a certain way. Um, it's interesting that you say the way we talk. You know, there, there's, we've all run into people that um, use a lot of vulgarity in, in their language. It's just the way they talk. And they don't even think anything of it. They don't even hear themselves when they're talking like that and it, it's it, you know it's it's in a way it's humorous because it's like wait a minute don't you realize how you're talking and what you're saying and yet but they don't because that's the habit that they have fallen into they don't even realize what we do what we say how we act and so it's you know, do that for like you said um, 90 days do that for three years do it for 10 years and you are really st stuck in there. I think this is an important first point to make in the show today because we we all want to be better people. I don't know of anybody that I've ever met in my life who didn't want to do things better, whether it was maybe for the wrong motivations. Maybe they wanted to be more successful or they wanted to uh, find a better relationship or something and they they were thinking in a in a greedy way. Or maybe they were just trying to be better, truly better human beings from the inside. I mean, everybody, I think, believes that we can do better. We can be better. I don't know if we realize that it's not going to happen by just by knowing more. It's going to happen by improving our habits. And if we're so stuck, as you've just said, if a, in a lifestyle habit pattern, it's going to take a monumental change, truly, to be able to improve. So the, it's very important to understand why our bad habits are formed. What causes us to acquire habits 
which eventually end up harming us or harming the society. All our bad habits are originally come from our insecurity. There are certain habits. We are afraid of height. We are afraid of so many things. So the insecurity is one of the culprit. And then there is fear and there is greed. There is stress. There is boredom. There is ignorance. There are traditions. We are fall into traditions. And we want to each one have a status. We want to have a position. We want to have a title. And some of the habits are given to us by our upbringing, upbringing our childhood, or then we acquire certain habits because of our profession, our culture, our education, our experience, and our expectation and our lust of power, and I can go on and on. Oh, these are all basically all embedded in our insecurity. Insecurity gives us all these other things, fear, greed, all, all these things. And once those are our truths, those are the guiding forces, they are ensured all are coming from your quit essential ego. Ego, uh, although we, we call, I don't have ego, I have insecurity, I fear. Our ego has many uh, forms it shows up. Everything, ego is my separateness of my being me. I feel insecure, I feel greedy, I feel stressed, and it's all caused by or erroneous truth of who we are. So all our bad habits are caused by that. So ultimately you can try to develop any good habits. So these things will interfere and modify all the good habits into a tainted good habits actually ends up being a bad habit, right? You know. Maybe we should have started, and maybe when we come back from this first break, we'll talk about how we define good versus bad habits, okay? I, because you just talked about, I mean, you covered a very wide a gamut of, of reasons why we have habits, and you use the word tradition and culture, you know, the, the which make me think about the environment that we grow up in, I mean, the family that we have around us so much of who we are is influenced by how we were raised and the environment that we were raised in. And when you talk about traditions and cultures, you know, I don't consider those beliefs bad habits. I don't, I don't consider any of those things that I, matter of fact, I, I highly value traditions, family traditions and, and holiday traditions and things like that. So, you know, I, I do see that we we do take some of those habits on because they're they're recommended to us or they're surrounding us and and we just kind of accept them as being truth and then we act accordingly and they become habits but when we come back let's talk about what you define as good habits versus bad habits and what is that distinction and which one should we be trying to change which ones can we change? Um, maybe with that total awakening that Ratanjit referred to with understanding who we truly are, or can we possibly make some of the changes along the way without that total transformation? We're talking today about stress-free living and how maybe our habits, good or bad, are causing us stress, or aren't they? We'll find out when we come back on Stress-Free Living. Stay with us. All right, Doug, good to have you back. I hope it's all connected now. I, we keep seeing you drop off. We'd rather have you there. Yeah. Anybody have what, any quick? Yeah, just not working. You just kept telling me I had an unstable connection. 
And I know I'm right. stable, but I didn't know my connection. <laughs> okay, well, sorry. Your, your, your connectivity is a, having a bad habit today. <laughs> Anybody want to do a quick thought with us? We welcome you. Anyone have a quick thought for a few minutes? Right, right. Okay. Ray put a very important yes. good and what bad. And uh, along with that, how this good and bad has been developed. Is it because of morality or how it has been developed? I, in this uh, supplement to addition to what is good and bad. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Good take on that. Can you hear me? Very good. We'll get it. Yes. Yeah, you're a little distorted, but I got the yeah. idea. It, you know how uh, how the morality of the world is influencing the the decision whether it's good or bad, and it whether it if if it really is or not. Yeah. Okay. Good thought. We will we will definitely take you up on that idea. Thank you. All right. I think we'll come right back with that. Okay. So how much time you have? Welcome, Sana here. Um, probably another 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just enjoying every bit of it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Coming back. Welcome back to Stress Free Living. Ratanji Sada, yours truly, Ray Samish, with you, and take a moment to welcome all of our guests. Uh, no matter how you are listening to us now, it could be on the radio, on AM or FM here in the Cleveland area, it could be on our stream at wintradio.com, or it could be on our YouTube channel. If you're watching us, we have the video there for all of our programs. We have about 60 different shows up there now. Uh, we're in the process of continuing to add more to that and just go out to find Stress Free Living Radio on YouTube. You can search on that and you can find a whole series of our programs for yourself. And maybe if you find one that is of particular interest to you or maybe of help to somebody uh, that you may enjoy. I also want to take a, a personal note here, uh, a very long time listener of our show, uh, Jeff Stevens, who has been a longtime supporter of our radio station. And I had the pleasure of uh, knowing Jeff since second grade. Um, uh, we were on the bus together and we've stayed friends for that entire time. And uh, we lost Jeff uh, this past week, very suddenly and unexpectedly, had not been ill, but um, our thoughts are with the Stevens family there and, and just had to say hello to him because he was a listener many, many times. Ratanjit, I got to tell you, he did, a, he did a better Ratanjit than you. He, <laughs> he listened to you so many times that he was able to uh, mimic you. Uh, and, and he did it with great respect and admiration because he loved the show. But uh, he was able to, it was like I was talking to you if I was talking to him because he could be you so well. <laughs> not, so, maybe not with the wisdom, but with the dialect, you know, if you could basically, understand. Basically, I, so, I have a habit of speaking in certain ways. So yes, that's exactly all, all our habits. For sure. That's just one of our many habits. So uh, again, the sympathies uh, and, and expressions there of love to the uh, Stevens family and all of you, wherever you're listening, we welcome you here today. Uh, Ratanji, let's get back to uh, the idea that we we poised in some of our Zoom guests, by the way. You can also join us on Zoom if you would like to do that so we can talk with you during the breaks and just send us a note through the radio station or to uh, myself or to Ratanjit and we'll give you that, that uh, secret Zoom link so you can join us and we can converse with you uh, before, after, and during the show. One of our guests here uh, definitely said that's a good thought to take. The, the idea, not only of our own evaluations of what is a good or a bad habit, if we're going to take the time to assess our lives and say, what habits should we change? What habits should we try to change if it is possible? Which ones we want to keep? Which ones we want to replace and throw away? There's also the factor that says the morals of the world are kind of determining what are good and bad habits. Perhaps what was considered a bad habit 10 years ago Maybe our grandparents never would have done that, or our parents wouldn't have, but now 
we say it's okay. And, and our children, then that becomes the norm for them. Society, politics, culture around us. Where do we find out what's good and what's bad? Who should make that choice? Does that come from internal or does it come from external standards of the world? So give me a, an example of good. I'll prove it that is bad. <laughs> you will. Um, <clears throat> how about being kind to people? How about my first response is being kind to people? How could that possibly be a bad habit? See, anytime you are being kind or you are kind, there's a difference. When you perform an act of kindness, you are doing that as a result of you being nice. You are looking better in your own eyes. So that is ego driven. And that is why you don't become kindness itself. When you become kindness, what comes out, you, out of you, you don't even know that. So when you perform an act of kindness knowingly, it is all ego. So that is why you are going to be kind to certain people. You are not going to be kind to certain other people. Are you going to be kind to somebody who is not kind to you? Give me that. Very hard to do that. Very it's hard very to hard to do that. So yeah. it is because you have not become kindness itself. So all our habits, just about every habits, are all coming out of our core belief that I'm a separate entity. Because nobody has told us about this oneness. Nobody has taught us about this oneness. Nobody has made us to live in this oneness. We are all we can talk all we want about oneness. Until you begin to live in this oneness, your, all your habits, are all the, they may look good, they are all bad. So we don't have any good habits until we become our true self. The reality is, that you don't need to be someone else. You just need to be true you, egoless self. All your habit will automatically fall into place. Boy, you know, I, I sometimes you have to look in life at the result and not the process, you know, that happens in business a lot where you say, well, sometimes the process doesn't, isn't exactly the way I want it to be, but the result comes out the way we need it to be, right? That's, that's a common situation in business. We, we're not sure if, if this is the best way to get there, but as long as we get to this spot, we, we've accomplished our goal. Let's go back to the idea of being kind, all right? I, I certainly can understand. I'm sure everybody understands what you said. Being kind, thinking about being kind is not as good as, as becoming kindness. So that kindness is just who we are and we don't even think about it. It just flows from us. The better example of that is love. And, and I, I really enjoy hearing you speak about that and the distinction between loving and becoming love. And that is the ultimate love when it just flows from you without judging, without thinking about it, without evaluating, should I give this person love or not? What will their response be? Have they been nice to me? Do they deserve my love? If you don't, if you put all that aside and you just become love, it is the purest form of love. And, and, and I admire and respect that thought. But when it comes to kindness, getting back to my earlier thought, if I'm being kind, there's still a benefit. There's a positive result. 
somebody feels good, somebody has received an act of kindness that inspires and motivates them to be kind. And you, you know, it's like when you, when, when you get to the fast food place, uh, the coffee shop and the guy and the, the person there says, you've already been paid for by the car ahead of you. You know, your, your coffee's already been paid for. If that's ever happened to you, it's like, really? Someone just paid me, bought my cup of coffee? That's crazy. And then you say, okay, then I'll buy the person behind me. Okay, I'll, what is their order? And I'll pay for that. And they tell you, well, they they have a family of 12 in their cars, so it's $42. But you say, okay, I made the commitment. I'm doing it anyway. But it's like kindness has a good result. It It changes the world. Does it really matter that the original person in that chain wasn't kindness, but had an act of kindness? Isn't that still a good habit to have? See, you, you are right. You know, it is generally good to practice kindness in absence of kindness. One is better than another. But until you are doing that out of ego, which is what you will do anyways. And that is not good because ultimately you have not, you are, you are nurturing all those things which are related to ego, which are related to insecurity, which are related to fear, greed, and all that. So especially if somebody is there on the stage an actor performs, you have become an actor. So until, unless nobody's watching you, you will not be kind. So you are always trying to get a medal, trying to get a uh, uh, unexpected or expected uh, medal of uh, or trophy for being kind. Because if somebody doesn't notice you, you cannot be kind. So the best part of that is, are you kind to yourself? Are you kind? Your kindness is a mindset which is supposed to give you a positive thought process. It generates creativity in you if you're part in kindness. If you are always thinking of kindness, you are kindness, then automatically your creativity is different, your thought process is different, your personality is different, your human health is different because it gives you a total different environment within you to be conducive to kindness rather than, than practicing kindness. Is it fair to say then that that we're talking almost about settling? Okay. The, the idea, I, I like what you said. Um, kindness, even if it's done for the wrong reasons, is better than the absence of kindness. So you acknowledge that. Okay. But if we're just still doing it at that second level where we have kindness, we know we're doing it, we're maybe doing it for selfish reasons. Maybe we're doing it because we know they're going to be nice to us if we're nice to them and, and all those other things. And maybe we're kind to our boss because we want to ultimately get a promotion, whatever it is. We're settling for that. We're, we're not trying to be the person we were meant to be. We're not trying to act the way we were wired to act. We're settling for acts of kindness instead of becoming kindness. And if I'm hearing you right, you know, by settling for that, we're, we're cheating not only the world of our best, but we're cheating ourselves of being becoming our best. We're, we're saying that we've got, we've checked that box of, of being kind without ever realizing that ultimately we can become kindness. Is, is that a fair assessment of what you said? Yes, you're, you're, you, you end up, see, uh, one example is we, we honor our veterans. We honor persons who have given their life 
in wars, we have protected them. So think about that. War itself is evil. Yeah. Right? So where does the war come from? Somebody is trying to win you. Somebody is trying to harm you. You are protecting yourself. So, so all that is basically embedded in wrong mindset somehow or other. So ultimately, until we change our, see, to understand this whole thing, there are three a segment of us as a human being. There's this human body and there is intellectual part, which is brain, which is our computer. And then there is all brain and human body will have no meaning if there was no life in it. So there is divine power which is present in this human body, which gives you life. So as a human body, if you are not operating in this mode of divine power, which is immune to insecurity, fear, greed, all that, the human body will always knows it is going to die it always knows it is going to starve. It always, so it is natural when you are operating in the human body mode to have ego, to have fear, to have greed. Those are natural. There's not nothing wrong with you. So until you consider yourself as a human body uh, a, enlivening force, uh, which is free of all our insecurity or ego, you will never be able to operate in oneness. You never be able to become love. You never be able to become kindness because once you are operating the, in the divine force, you see other person not as a black or white or young or old or Asian or Americans, you see nothing but the divine power in them, enlivening them. You have natural tendency to serve that divine power. And as a consequence of serving the divine power, how do you serve the divine power? You, your mindset is automatically part in adding the highest value because there is no room for mediocrity. Whatever you have done, you are going to do better. So the only habit you will have is adding the highest value to whoever or whatever situation you are placed under. So this happens automatically once you operate in the divine power mode, and as a consequence, all the worldly uh, successes are at your feet. Because can you imagine, you are always adding highest value unconditionally, so you are automatically going to succeed. So we are our own worst enemy when we operate in the only human body mode and all our decisions and habits are inculcated by insecurity, fear, greed, and all those emotions associated with that. And as a, no matter how hard we try, until we change one habit, we cannot change any other habit. The one habit we need to change is to move from human body mode into oneness mode, right? It makes you know, perfect sense for somebody who has been listening to you for years and many of our listeners have been, then that makes perfect sense. 
for some of our newer listeners and happen to know that we have some new listeners uh, that are very fresh with our show that are listening with us here today joining us that has to be maybe a little bit um disappointing because it's a it's a pretty big step it's a pretty big habit change to accept what you've shared with us if, if we have lived our whole lives in the physical mode and maybe we didn't even think about the real us the, the part of us that's connected that that all of us share within us under our skin under our under our habits underneath our personalities that we're all connected with that universal power if we haven't done a lot of time thinking about it and exploring that and and haven't accepted that yet are we saying that it, it isn't even worth our time to try to change our habits. I mean, is that to, to do the evaluation that I talked about, which ones are good, which ones do I want to replace? Is that fruitless? I mean, are, are we, are you saying that until you accept this one major change, then don't even bother trying to change your habits because you won't be able to? You will pick up, you will replace one bad habit through a pseudo good habit, which is actually going to be bad habit. So you are, un, until, unless all your habits are incentivized through your human, human body mode, which is going to be automatically be uh, embedded in your insecurity, your fear, greed, and lust for power and all those things. And although you may uh, window dress it, may, may look good, uh, but ultimately uh, you are really not operating in the mode uh, which is going to give you, uh, going to change you completely. You don't have to try altering your habits, you're automatically, all your habits are going to transform once you understand who you are. Once you understand you are the divine power which is giving you life and you are not the human body. You are only in the space suit of human body. So in our example, when we had a, a spacesuit story. We went to a planet, and in order to survive in that planet, each one had to uh, wear a spacesuit. And each of those spacesuits, you can select whether it is white, black, short, tall, male, female. And as a consequence, those spacesuits have so many. Uh, amazing technologies, it would feed itself, it would do itself, but inside you, the spacesuit, it is you. And if you became habituated because of the habit given to you by the spacesuit, you are not going to have true your habits. The true your habits are only given to you by the power which enlivens you, Ray. All right, we are we are past our break time. We do need to take a quick break here. We're going to come back and kind of wrap this up here today. And and if it has been determined that ultimately we are our habits, and ultimately those habits that we've thought through have perhaps been designed by less than ideal parameters, basically using our brain that kind of said, hey, we want to be more secure. We want to we want to have more. We want to look better. We want to feel better about ourselves. It was for the wrong reasons. We've got a lot of habits that we need to correct. Let's find out, as Ratanjit said, how we can make that happen by understanding the one true habit. So we're going to concentrate on that one true habit when we come back in just a moment on Stress-Free Living. Stay with us. All right, we will have a, a short segment when we return, about eight minutes long, but you now have 90 seconds. Who's got a thought? 
Something you want me to ask, Ratanji? Yeah. Uh, if I may. Hi, Sunil. Yeah. Please. Hi, hi. Uh, thing is that many a times uh, people do not realize it's a bad habit. For example, if someone uh, due to uh, the environment of insecurity is used to cheating or dishonesty, uh, time and again, uh, there are reminders to correct that person. All the compassion is given to correct that person, but somehow their minds justify to live that kind of habit. So how can one create more awareness or help that person to understand that it's incorrect to have a bad habit because the mind justifies, that's the problem. Good question. Thank you. Okay, I apologize. Uh, and I know, let's see, let me monitor. My phone had been going off here and I, I got a pretty important message that I had to look at. So I missed that. Ratanji, uh, paraphrase that back to me so I can ask you. <laughs> or, or you could just take, you could run with it if you want to because I sincerely Sana, apologize. Uh, sum summarize that question. for us once again. Sana? Sana, one more time, yeah. would you please? Yeah. I'm so many sorry. Many times, yeah. Many a times people who have unethical practices or say like dishonesty or lack of integrity, uh, they are not aware that it's a bad habit. Uh, despite the fact that their loved ones who identify it's a bad habit, they try to make them explain through compassion, love, oneness. But it is these people who justify in their mind that this act is normal. Uh, to be dishonest is normal or disloyal is normal. So how can one person make... We are back on Stress-Free Living. Ratanjit Sada, yours truly, Ray Sandwich, with you talking with our wonderful guests or our Zoom guests that uh, we have a chance to engage with during our breaks. And again, if you'd like to be part of our Zoom family, we'd love to have you join us every single week. Just let us know. Contact us at the radio station, our Facebook page, contact Ratanjit, and uh, we will be happy to share that with you. Ratanjit, let me pick up on that question that, that uh, someone had before we ultimately talk about that, that engaging in the one true habit change. Many of us, we've been talking about the habits that we have and how we want to change our habits and be better people. But many times we are surrounded by and affected by the habits of others. And not that we want to be judgmental people, but it be, you know, we want to help them. We want to help people become the best that they can be. And we see the habits that they are engaged in. And maybe they're physical habits that are very deteriorating. Maybe they uh, are addict, have addictions uh, and, and we want to help them overcome those habits. Maybe it's the way they act. Maybe they are uh, they're dishonest people too many times. We see them lying and we know that that's going to ultimately hurt them. How, how can we engage in those situations? Is it, is it just a matter of showing love and compassion, or do you have a recommendation of how we can influence others to see these habits, to recognize the, the bad habits that they have and encourage them to work on those? See, what happens is if I have migrated from human body mode to oneness mode, all my habits are going to be right. So then I will not see others classify them as bad people or good people. I will see, yes, their habits are basically formed because they are in the human body mode, but they are really the divine power enlivening them. You begin to serve them. You begin to be kind to them. You begin, when you are genuinely expressing the warmth, even the worst person who has bad habits is going to change their mind. They begin to listen to you because they find you genuine and you 
have earned their trust. So ultimately, by being who you are, by being the divine power you are, you are operating in then you are going to your body language, your tone, and your words are all going to indicate the respect for that human being, regardless of their habit, regardless of their behavior. And they begin to ultimately find, my goodness, this person, no matter how I behave, is always very kind to me. No matter how I... So eventually, you will have an impact and effect on that. By changing your own core habit, you stand a chance of changing somebody else. Otherwise, you cannot change them until you change yourself into that oneness mode. So that gets us right back. Great answer. Thank you. It gets us right back to where we left off before the break. If it does come down to that habit, if, if anything else that we can try to do to improve ourselves is basically just redoing the same thing that we've done the rest of our lives. If we were basically replacing one bad habit with another bad habit. And we often talk about the brain and the, and the amazing brilliance power of the brain but because we do know that we have so much capabilities in the brain, we give it all the credit and we say that it's always going to make the right decisions. And anybody, as we've lived longer in life, we know that it, it doesn't make the right decisions because it's, it's basing those decisions on tainted data and data, data that has been very much uh, skewed by our, by our uh bad habits, basically, by our, our, our lust for greed and, and power and money and, um, and our insecurities and all those other kind of things. So it just makes sense that if we think through the process with our brains, we're going to ultimately just change one bad habit and replace it with another one. So if it has to be the acceptance of oneness, if that is ultimately the the main habit that we have to have. How would you transition in, in you know, just a, a couple of minutes here, how would you transition us to buy into that? How would you take, tell somebody that just said, Ratanjit, I've got a minute to understand what you're all about. How would you justify changing to the one universal true truth habit from where I'm at? Once you buy into this and begin to monitor yourself, when the old habits come in, that means your computer, your brain is being controlled by your human body mode. Because human body mode, all our insecurity, ego, greed, and everything is always present in it. So it is how... This is designed. It is designed to survive. It has to have food. It has to have all those things. It is the human body is designed to have all those qualities. If your brain is controlled by the human body, you are going to have all those qualities. So when you have all those bad habits, you have to recognize that your brain is being controlled by the human body. You switch it to let it be controlled by the oneness present in you. Slowly, slowly, you will begin to switch and you be, will begin to find yourself being, your brain being operated by oneness paradigm. And once those happens, you will have inner peace, you will have total contentment, you will have total security, you will have no ego, you will have pure love. All these good qualities, you will become feeling joy-filled. And once that feeling comes in you, it automatically 
you will use the habit formation of the brain and begin to live in oneness paradigm more often than the human body paradigm. So it is not going to happen 100%, but more often you begin to live in oneness paradigm, the better you are. We have to leave it at that because we're out of time. So, so eloquently spoken there. Uh, so meaningful to me and hopefully to all of our listeners as well. I want to thank all of our great Zoom audience here, our Zoom guests, and all of you, whoever you are listening or watching us, we really value you. Ratanji, uh, ultimately, uh, you are the one that we value the highest. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us here today. And we're all playing the same game. Have a great week. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you. <laughs>